Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to our Sabbath morning service. It's the 23rd of December and uh, tomorrow is Christmas Eve and uh, we'd just like to share, or Kai would like to share something about the true meaning of Christmas. But first, I will say an opening prayer to invite the Spirit with us. So let us pray. Our oh, most gracious, beloved Father in heaven, we thank you for this Sabbath day that we can come unto you and you can be with us in spirit, Lord, as we we learn about you and get to know you more. As we come to this Christmas time where for many people it's the only time they think of Jesus and let's hope in their hearts and let people see that they can have a relationship. So God, we invite you to be with us. And I say these things to your gift to us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'd like to just say a few words about the true meaning of Christmas. As we know, we all have happy merriments, presents, parties, family get-togethers, and sometimes some of us, not all of us, forget the true meaning of the season. And that is to celebrate the greatest gift of all anyone can have, brothers and sisters, and that is our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He is the true meaning of the season. And I would also like to say that no matter what your faith, religion, colour of skin, where you are from, no matter what your faith or beliefs are, are, we are all brothers and sisters of our one true God. So, shalom, my brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Thank you, Brother Kyle, for that. As we take time now, we will look for the prayer for peace. And today in the prayer for peace, as we light the candle, uh, we think of the people of Haiti. Today in our prayers, remember the people of Haiti. In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to the time of prayer. So this happens in the temple all the time, in Independence Missouri. The scripture reading is Isaiah 42, 10 through to 12a. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastline and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its town lift up their voice, the village that Kanda inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Salah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountain. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coast, coastlands. The prayer today, the prayer for peace from Community of Christ, which is a church I attend and Kyle attends as well. It's from Miriam Mann. God of glory and greatness, help us to gather in spirit and understanding the richness of your goodness. Lead us to worship. We are thankful for the gift of your son this Advent season. He touched and blessed every aspect of our lives while on earth. He is the Prince of Peace. Thank you for his great love and beauty of his sharing. Make us responsible to the Holy Spirit. He welcome through the prayer. We seek it in our sharing of human problems and relationships. We will lift up Jesus' ensign 
of peace to our troubled world. Challenge us again during this preparation of Advent to become the greatest part of world redemption and give him, for we ask it in his worthy name. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah, so we pray for peace in our world. And uh, I don't know if you've seen the video by Paul, Paul McCartney, The Pipes of Peace. And in that video, it's the First World War and it's Christmas Day. As soon as the bell rings on Christmas Day, the troops come out of the trenches and, and have time together have a time of peace and let's hope that can happen in Ukraine and Russia war and with uh, Israel and and the, the trouble there and Palestine. Palestine yeah. Uh, yeah and they they had peace for a day and that actually happened and that proved that people could get on with each other. They shared what they had in common So that was then, and let's pray that can happen now. So it's now time for the sacrament, and I think we we'll do we we'll do both the prayers. I'll do the bread, and then yeah. yeah. So if you hopefully you've got your emblems ready and your wine. So the bread was provided by the people that baked it. <laughs> And by the me, bread of life. And, and Kyle's provide, provided the wine today. So. Look at our Savior. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So, as we prepare to take the sacrament, uh, I would like you to kneel or bow, whatever's good for you or wh whatever you're able, as I begin to read the prayer for the bread. The blessing of the bread. Eternal God, we ask you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who receive it, that they may eat in remembrance of thy body of your Son, and witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. It's now time for Kyle to share the wine prayer with us. So if you kneel or bow, whatever's safe for you. And it's over to Brother Kyle. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have a spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Now, as we have time to ponder 
as we ate the flesh of Christ. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This Sabbath is the Sabbath just before Christmas. And so I really wanted to talk a little bit about the birth of our Savior. And yet at the same time, there's something that's really been weighing heavily upon my heart. And I feel really impressed by the Spirit to share the story of the birth of Jesus in the Book of Mormon and talk about how it's relevant to us today. As I've mentioned in other videos and other things I've written, I am a huge fan of the Book of Mormon. I love the Book of Mormon. It's obviously scripture to me. And yet, there are things I don't like about it, just like there's things I don't like about the Bible, there's things I don't like about you know, various scriptures. And that, of course, is the violence. The birth of Jesus, the story in the Bible, is very different from the story in the Book of Mormon because, it's obviously, they're not happening in the same place. There was no baby Jesus coming to wherever it is that the Book of Mormon took place. And it wasn't under Roman rule, so there was no tax issue where people are trying to get together. But what was happening is that the people who didn't believe had finally gotten to a part, and we're in the first chapter of both the REV and the OPV, REV being the RLDS traditions version of the Book of Mormon, and the OPV being the Orson Pratt or the Salt Lake City Church's version of the Book of Mormon. It says, now it came to pass that there was a day set apart by the unbelievers that all those who believed in those traditions should be put to death except the sign should come to pass which had been given by Samuel the prophet. Now obviously this is going to make Nephi, as he puts it, exceedingly sorrowful. And so he goes out in verse 11 of both of them and he cries, he bows down and he cries mightily to God on behalf of his people. He doesn't want them to be destroyed for their faith. And the voice of the Lord came to him saying, and this is and this is 12b of the RAV and 13a of the OPV, lift up your head and be of good cheer. For behold, the time is at hand, and upon this night shall the sign be given. And on the morrow come I into the world to show unto you the world that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouths of my holy prophets. And so the sun went down, and this is in verse 17, REV, 15B, OPV, and there's no darkness. And so the people were freed. Those that wanted to murder the believers were unable to do so because the sign had come. And of course, that was a miracle. Why do I bring that up? Why is this weighing heavily upon my heart? Last month, I was down at the bus stop. I Every day I take my two youngest kids down to the bus stop and I talk to the parents there. And one of my neighbors made a comment that it was really irrelevant to try to arrest people who are protesting or committing crimes because our judicial system doesn't work and it would be easier just to shoot them. Now, I'm sure that this type of vigilante justice it has its supporters. But this really surprised me coming from my neighbor. I, I, I don't know him that well, but what I did know of him, that, that just really struck me as odd. So I wanted to know why he believed this. And apparently a politician here in the United States that he really liked had encouraged this behavior. And he believed what this politician was saying. Now, I don't want to get into the politics of this because I, I don't care what your politics are. I really don't. What I care is what's in your heart. I don't care where you are in the world. I don't care where you are, religiously, politically, etc. My big ask is just be kind to each other. Just love each other a little more. And so I talked to him about this, and, and he was saying that in cities where people weren't following and encouraging the particular politician that he likes, that crime is everywhere, and the people are animals now, and they should just be put down like the animals that they are. And because the police are so ineffective, this politician is correct, and, and we just need to carry guns, and we see a crime, just shoot the people committing the crimes. And this particular politician has come out talking about this idea that true Americans have some sort of blood purity that is being corrupted 
by people coming here from other countries. And he can believe whatever he wants. I, I, I genuinely, I care, don't, don't get me wrong, but I, I don't feel a need to change his opinions, although I would love for the Lord to change his heart. What bothers me is the people that are eating it up and believing it. And I, I don't think that what I'm saying here is in any way, shape, or form political. I think the problem is that the love of mankind has waxed cold in the heart of these people, or this politician would just be another nobody out there spouting rhetoric. Anybody can go on YouTube, I mean, I'm doing it right now, and throw out their two cents. What's really relevant is, what are the people listening to, picking up on, and agreeing with? And this isn't a problem merely in the United States alone. I don't want to get into the politics of the UK leaving the EU, the European Union. What I do want to do is point out that the biggest reason that I heard over and over again, and again, I, I'm in the United States, so I'm hearing it from somewhere else, and so I don't want to judge that nation or those people. The thing I was hearing a lot was that there were people coming in from other countries, and that certain UK citizens didn't like it, and enough of them didn't like it, that they wanted to leave the European Union. Now, whether a country should be a part of the European Union or not, it's none of my business. I, I'm, I'm not in a country that's in the EU. As a minister of Jesus Christ, what is my business and what I do get concerned about is, again, this idea of the love of mankind waxing cold. Why did Russia try to annex Ukraine? Why is there a war between Israel and the Gaza Strip? Why can't we find peace? It's the same problem that we have right here in the Book of Mormon. Instead of saying, I believe what I believe, and I respect your right to believe what you believe, these people are saying, if you're not like me, we don't like you. We want to control you. We want to tell you what to do, where to go, how to do it. Or we just don't want you around. Or worse, we just want to murder you. There are people right here in the United States who are dreaming of violence. They are dreaming of putting people to death. There have been people that have literally traveled from one state to another because they think they get to use their guns to murder someone. And so I don't think that where we are right now is very far away from what we read of the Christmas story in the Book of Mormon. And I know this sounds really depressing. I hope you've stuck with me so far so that I can wrap this up by saying that there is hope. In the Book of Mormon, after the sign, according to verse 27, RAV, and 23A, OPV, Nephi went forth among the people and also many others baptizing into repentance, in the which there was a great remission of sins. And thus the people began again to have peace in the land. And so I, I don't want us to look out and see the horrible things that are being said on TV and the horrible things that are happening around the world, the wars and the rumors of wars, and think that we need to give up. The message I want to leave you with today is the hope of Christmas, the hope of Jesus Christ. What is it that saved the lives of all of the believers in the Book of Mormon lands? It was their faith. And brothers and sisters, I do believe that if we have faith and we can love others, truly love them where they are, Refuse to fight and bicker with them when they come to fight and bicker with us. But instead, just let them know, I love you. I accept you. You don't have to accept me. It's okay. I'm a Christian. Jesus told us to love our enemies. And I don't see you as my enemy, but I know you see me as your enemy. But I want you to know that that's okay. I'm not going to fight you. I'm just going to love you. If we can do that and mean it, and I can tell you, I do that all the time online. It drives people crazy because they want to fight. 
but I, I'm not going to fight with them. And what happens is, eventually, they go away. And there have been a number of people who, you know what, they're not coming and being a part of the fellowship. They're not suddenly changing who they are, their opinions. But they do realize that I'm not the person they assumed that I was. And I start hearing things like, I never thought I would say this, but I agree with you. Because contention does nothing but build walls. And that's what Satan wants. He wants walls. Jesus wants bridges. He wants hope. And brothers and sisters, we cannot just roll over and take it and give up and think that there is no hope. But giving up hope isn't going to get Jesus here any faster. Our job is to love and to hope and continue moving forward in Christ no matter what happens, just like Nephi did. Because we're the believers. The Lord is in control over all things. He was not born on that day to save those people in the Book of Mormon. Knowing the date that he was going to be born, he merely ensured that the day that was chosen by the adversaries would be in a range around the time that he would be born so that everything would work out. So know that the Lord has a plan. We may not know what's going to happen next, but he does. So please, brothers and sisters, don't lose your faith in him. This Christmas, look at the people that see themselves as your enemy, that set themselves as your enemy, and ask yourself, how can I be a little nicer to this person? How can I let this person know that I love them anyway, without being condescending about it? How can we bring hope to a world that Satan wants us to see as hopeless? How can we project the light of Christ into this, his creation, and remind ourselves that it is good because he said it was good? So, brothers and sisters, let's set politics aside. Let's set religious sects and theological differences aside. Let's set aside all the things that the world uses to divide us. And let's be one in Christ. Let's bring a little more hope to the hopeless. Let's bring a little more joy to those that desire us to mourn. And let's remember the miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ, not just on the day that the world has chosen to celebrate him, but every day throughout the year. Let's remember this story and the hope that was given to the whole world in the birth of Jesus Christ. That's my message, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So thank you. That concludes the sacrament for today. So this week we've got a busy time. Uh, we got Sunday service tomorrow, and we've got a Christmas Day service at Community of Christ in Claycross. And then uh, me, David and Brandt and hopefully some others will meet on Wednesday night for the, the prayer meeting. So in the prayer meeting this week we prayed for all those that are on their own and we also prayed for peace uh, so that the conflicts could just take a time out and, and enjoy the peace of Christmas. So from me and Kai, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we say those that word, which means peace, we say that word. Shalom. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Merry Christmas, brothers Merry and sisters. Christmas.